Welcome to part three of Let's Play Star Strider by Luke Sharp. At the end of the last part, I was about to read paragraph 234. Here we go. You see a road ahead and follow it until a large flashing star symbol appears. You have no retro fuel, so you set down and skid along the road. Now the Mark III spins to a halt a few yards from a fuel pump. Add two luck points. A stony-faced android comes out and asks if you want to fill her up. 10 to 279. Okay, how are we doing for luck? Um, I have 12 luck. Um, that was my initial score. Am I allowed to go over that? I'm pretty sure there wasn't a thing that said I couldn't, but... Um, no, it, um, just like the stamina, it doesn't state that I, uh, uh, that I can't go over the initial score. You know, but uh, I'm not going to do that because it'll just make the game ridiculously easy. So I think that's a mistake. Um, so I'm not going to go over the. Uh, um, I'm not going to go over the uh, uh, the initial luck score. I'll just leave it at twelve. Okay. Um, okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to turn to two hundred and seventy-nine. Here we go. Here we are. You pick up some food cubes and a mangola tube. Add four stamina points. Okay, that puts my stamina up by four again to 43. Because it doesn't state that I, uh, that I can't go above my initial score. Um, while you crunch your Wheaty Snaps flavoured cube, you set a course for Paris. Turn to 78. Or London. Turn to 217. Okay, we are going to go to... Paris. So let's turn to 78. When you reach Paris, you see a beautiful overgrown city. A galactic Ents commentary automatically starts up on your Zipcar speakers, and while the vehicle follows the preset landing coordinates, you look out and play the tourist. Uh, the commentary is interrupted by a Mangola advert, and then the craft auto lands. When you get out of the zip car, two Grompole androids appear and arrest you for flying without paying the toll charges. Uh, deduct two time units, turn to 314. Okay, but we're down to 26. Okay, 314, here we go. You plead that you did not know and are told that ignorance of the law is no excuse. Do you fight your way out, 10 to 399, or go quietly, 10 to 168? We're going to go quietly and 10 to 168. You are marched off to a nearby Grom craft and thrown into, into a small dark cell. After several gravity hours, you feel the craft take off. Soon you are taken into a building marked Bastille and lined up in a corridor with a row of other criminals. Androids clatter up and down looking busy. In the far corner there is a door marked uh, Communications Private. You watch carefully when a Grom comes out and you see a com term inside. Do you risk going in, turn to 10, or will you stay where you are, turn to 110? Um... We're going to risk going in and turn to 10. You check carefully that there are no groms or androids in sight and then stride into the room. Uh, the other criminals stare in amazement. The terminal is showing vid news as part of high security grom TV. Suddenly you see the president with a grom and two guards. You look carefully at the coordinates on the left of the screen. The first four groups are standard, are standard galactic space codes for Earth Sector North, but you do not recognise the last group. However, you take care to memorise the code. You head for the door, but just then a Grom walks in. He emits a muted scream and you move to hit him, but he collapses in a fearful heap. You go through the door and are promptly grabbed by two XLs. Turn to 322. Okay, and there's the picture. Okay, so we have a clue here. Um, the first four groups are standard, um, but you do not recognise the last group. So we want to 
note down 82YB. No, it's 4B, sorry, 824B. So let's note that down. Eight two four B. Um, now we're turning to three hundred and twenty two. You are thrown into a dark room. You are deprived of all of all your senses until a gromulan face appears before you and in a voice that seems to surround you tells you that they know about your mission through their galactic moles all they need is for you to confess and you will not be harmed do you confess 10 to 57 or say nothing 10 to 249 we are going to say nothing of course and turn to 249 you wake up in a dark damp dismal room you are chained. You are chained up. You look up and see a hideous sight. A Grom stands before you with snakes growing out of his head. All the time you hear a command inside your brain. You will tell us about your mission. You will tell us about your mission. Test your fear factor. If you are frightened, reduce your stamina by two points. Now repeat the test twice more. If you lose six stamina points, your control has has broken and you have revealed your mission 10 to 57 if you have lost four stamina points or fewer turn to 47 okay there's the grom lovely okay how do we test our fear factor again 249 okay we do it the same way but we don't the same way as luck but we don't yeah, lose fear points, whatever. So we need um, dice roll that's less than or equal to 12. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to win every time. I have to do it three times. One, two, three. Yeah, good. That was, uh, uh, that was easy. Anyway, so we're guaranteed because we've got the maximum fear score because I was very lucky like that, wasn't I? Anyway, so we lost four stamina points or fewer. Because it's a discrete value, so not less. Um, and we're turning to 47. Um, suddenly the, uh, the scene changes. You are standing by a beautiful beach. The sun is setting and you know that you are rich and powerful, but you cannot remember any details. You are about to remember when your rogue tracer mind training reasserts itself and you know that this is just another Grom brain game. Uh, the scene fades into darkness. Four doors appear. A voice tells you that three of them lead to death and one leads to freedom, and that the choice is yours. You are also forced into a decision by the wall behind you, glowing red hot and pushing you towards the doors. Uh, the doors are marked with chess symbols. Do you choose? The pawn, turn to 23. Uh, the knight, turn to 166. The rook, turn to 212. Or the bishop, turn to 225. We are going to choose the knight and turn to 166. You have opened the correct door. Add two luck points. Okay, which I which I don't need. Um, it opens into daylight outside an old high wall. You cannot believe that the Groms have let you go, and then you look to either side of you. Two XLs in ritual dueling armour stand with neutron swords raised above their heads. The beams swish downwards. You drop flat onto the ground. When you look up, you see that one of the XLs has a deep gash through its chest piece, and while you watch, it falls over in a cloud of acidic self-destruct. Uh, the other XL has lost its right arm. They have missed you and hit each other. Now the remaining android comes at you. One armed XL, skill 4, stamina 4. If you lose, you have no excuses. If you win, turn to 328. Um, skill 4, stamina 4. Skill 4, stamina, stamina 4, one armed XL. Let's do this. One, whoops, one armed XL, four and four. Okay, let me just see how to do this again. Combat. 
if you throw double six at, at any time while fighting an android then you have found the weak spot okay so that's how that works okay where were we 249 or something weren't we? now we're on 47 i can never remember the you know the last paragraph number i have a very bad um short-term memory I won't lie. Anyway, 166. Okay, here we are. So let's fight this. Um, right, so my skill is 11, and his is 4. Let's go. So 4 plus 4 is 8. Um, I get uh, 18. So 8 to 18. So 8 to 18. Puts them down to two. Okay, whoops. Um, four plus six is ten. I get eighteen. So ten to eighteen. And that's the end of that. Here we go. Okay, let's remove any buzzing. Should there be any? Why doesn't that work sometimes? It's really annoying. Look, if I press, it doesn't do anything. I have to sort of hold it. Anyway, enough of that. Um, anyway, so we won, and we're turning to 328. If you're going to make a free dice program, make it work. Right. Um, while you dash off down the back streets, you hear a craft taking off very close by and obviously looking for you. In your haste, you find yourself in a blind alley. There is an open warehouse door on the right and a pile of rubble and a broken manhole on the ground in front of you. Do you go into the warehouse, do you go into the warehouse, turn to 365 or down the manhole, turn to 87? Um, we're going to go into the warehouse and turn to 365. You slip into the warehouse as the door slides shut. You look around. It appears to be a Grom Android assembly plant. You are in a room surrounded by immobile, headless XLs. A forklift Tron moves between them. There are two doors ahead. Do you take the left one, turn to 158, or the right one, turn to 290? Uh, we're going to take the right one and turn to 290. Imagine that pictures for us. Um, you walk in and see a group of assembly robots putting together a new range of Excels. Now the room is stacked full of Android parts. In the corner you see a flashing red light. Suddenly a headless Excel grabs you and locks its arms around your body. Meanwhile another headless Excel comes slowly towards you, its arms opening and closing like pincers. Throw two dice and, and add up the result. This is the Android strength factor. Throw one die, add the result to your stamina score, and enter it in the physical tasks box on the adventure sheet. This is your effort to get free. If your effort is equal to or greater than the android, than the android strength, then you have broken loose, turn to 348. If it is not, then deduct one point from your stamina score and try again. If you do not break free, you are finished. Okay, so... Um, okay, so pretty much this is uh, just a dice test here. So we have to roll two dice, and if it's um, and if our one is greater than, or rather, uh, okay, we roll two dice, and if that's less than one die roll plus my stamina, um, then that means I win. Okay, so let's do this. So I roll two dice, and I get nine. Uh, my stamina is uh, extremely big because it's you know, it hasn't really gone down, and it's 43, so 43, 43 plus a d6, okay, 1d6, okay, so that's 47, that's bigger than 9, so therefore I broke free. Um, okay, so, yep, so I've broken loose, 348, there's the picture, I mean, they should have made it so that, you know, I, my stamina score can't go above my initial stamina they really should have done that oh well 348 uh, because um i mean it's easy anyway because 
the maximum he can get is 12. So all I need is a stamina above at least a stamina of about at least 11. And then I'm guaranteed to win. Anyway, 348. Uh, alarms flash flash as you get out into the loading bay. <clears throat> I'll say that again. Alarms flash as you get out into the loading bay. Then you see a Grom commercial transport which is about to take off. Uh, the plastic crates are all marked with a circle with a horizontal line through it. Uh, deduct two time units. Let's be down to 24. Do you wish to stow away on the transport, turn to 245, or go to the Silverhound Terminal, turn to 134? Okay, we're going to go to the Silverhound Terminal and turn to 134. You make your way to the Silverhound Terminal. Before you go in, you see a squad of Grom poles and a sign flashing above them announcing, All services are cancelled. You back out and catch sight of a bank of vid screens. Uh, you back out and catch sight of a bank of vid screens. They have stopped showing advertisements and are transmitting pictures of you. As you head back to the transport craft you saw earlier, you come across another in the process of refueling. It is also full of crates marked with a circle and horizontal line. Do you try getting onto this craft, turn to 245, or will you go back to the other one, turn to 239? Okay, we're going to go back to the other one um, and turn to 239. Uh, the transport is of standard galactic general rocket motors design and you are skilled in stowing away on these. Uh, the robo loader ignores you as you slip between the plastic crates and raise the lid of the emergency humanoid operator's cab. You slip in, check the rations and find a good selection. You set your alarm and fall asleep. Add 6 stamina points and turn to 208. Ok, that puts my stamina up to 49. And we're turning to 208, which is just over here. So I won't use the scroll bar, I'll use the scroll wheel on my mouse. Right. Uh, the chronograph wakes you up just as the transport is landing. You get up and stroll through an open hatch. A robot ignores you as it unloads the crates. You look around but see nothing except a bleak wasteland. The only feature is a tunnel entrance into which the crates are being conveyed. There is a sign above the entrance, a circle with a horizontal line through it. You walk into the tunnel and to your left you see an old poster stuck on a brick wall. Add four luck points, which I don't need. Study the poster carefully and use any clues you have acquired in your travels. You are at the south, at the southernmost point of the tunnel system. Keep this page marked since you will have to refer back to work out your relative position. Um, you walk into the tunnel until you come to a small chamber stacked with crates. The tunnel continues in a northwesterly direction. Beside the crates you see a sophisticated speed board with several attachments, including an old-fashioned neutron sword. Do you jump on and take it, 10 to 274, or approach carefully to see if anyone is around, 10 to 223? Okay, let's have a look at the map first. There we go. Okay, um, I better just make a note of this. So 208 for the map. Yeah, so paragraph 208 contains the poster slash map. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to jump on and take it and turn to 274. You leap onto the you leap onto the board. I'll start again. You leap onto the board, touch a few pressure pads, and glide off almost silently. As you speed away, a horned creature bursts out from behind the crates and shrieks at you. Now the board is light and easy to control, but you are not sure about fuel levels. Do you travel flat out, turn to 253, or at half speed to conserve fuel, turn to 148? Okay, we're going to travel flat out. 
and 10 to 253, which is just over here. You notice alarm lights flashing as you travel along. In front of you, two heavy metal doors are slowly sliding shut. You think that you might just make it. Test your luck. If you're lucky, 10 to 85. If you're unlucky, you are crushed between the doors. Okay. Okay, my luck is 12. So we need this dice roll to be 12 or less, which is... Uh, 12 or lower, sorry, which it is. So let's remove any buzzing, should there be any, but we lose a luck point. So it puts me down to 11. Um... And we were lucky, so we're turning to 85. Uh, deduct two time units. You are in a chamber with a blocked exit south. Uh, and exits west, 10 to 53, or north, 10 to 267. Okay, let's remove those time units, or deduct them, 2, 2, 22. Okay, so where are we going now? We're going to go west, and turn to 53. Test your luck. If you're lucky, you turn to 395. If you're unlucky, you turn to 67. Okay, so we need us to be 11 or lower, which it is. If we've got 8 again, so we're lucky. But we have to lose another luck point. Now they're going down. All right, so um, we were lucky, so we're turning to 395. Here we are. Um, Reduce time by two units. Okay, let's do that again. Puts me down to 20. Let's put in, uh, start a new line. Um, you are in a chamber with exits northeast, turn to 2, east, turn to 85, and west, turn to 56. Now here you're supposed to use the... Uh, uh, I think you're supposed to use the map, uh, the poster map, but I already know the way, so I don't really need to. Anyway, so are we... Exiting northeast, turn to 2, east, turn to 85, or west, turn to 56. Um, we're going to go northeast, um, and so we're turning to 2. Um, you, are in a ch uh, you are in an empty chamber. There are exits northeast, turn to 7, and southwest, turn to, uh, to, turn to 395. To the northwest is another tunnel, turn to 27. Okay, we are going to go We're going to go northeast again and turn to seven. Um, you are in a chamber packed full of food cubes and drink tubes. A forklift tron is busy stacking small boxes. Do you wish to rest, eat and drink? If you do, deduct five time units and add four stamina points. There are exits northeast, turn to 21, and southwest, turn to 2. Um, okay, so that's four stamina for five time units. That puts me up to 53 and puts me down to eight, um, 15 time units because I lost five for that, didn't I? Remember, what was it? A uh, um, hedonistic gorge and um, gorging. Anyway, um, we are going to exit. Um, exit northeast and turn to twenty one. Um, you are in a chamber with blocked exits to the north and southeast. Do you go northeast, turn to 62, uh, east, turn to 48, southwest, turn to 85, or west, turn to 7? There is also a, moder a modern, smaller tunnel to the northwest, turn to 82. Okay, we are going to go northeast again and turn to 62. Yeah, you are in a chamber full of crates. There are exits blocked by rubble to the north and west. Uh, deduct two time units. Which way do you go? East. Now let's just deduct the two time units first before I forget. Let's be down to 13. Okay, east turn to 139. North, uh, northeast turn to 318. Southwest turn to 21. Or south turn to 48. There is also a smaller modern tunnel heading southeast turn to 82. 
Okay, we are going to go northeast again and turn to 380. Northeast all the way. You are in a chamber. In the corner stands a deactivated XL. Behind it is a door marked with a chess knight symbol. Do you go through the door? Turn to 387. Um, do you go through the door? Turn to 387. There is a blocked exit northeast and other exits north. Turn to 353. South, turn to 139. And southwest, turn to 62. Okay, we are going to go north. Um... Okay, we're just going to make a note that there is um, chess knight symbol on paragraph 318. Um, anyway, we're going to go uh, north and turn to 353. So 353, here we go. Uh, deduct two time units. Okay, it puts me down to 11. Uh, the tunnel divides. There are exits east, turn to 37, west, turn to 131, and south, turn to 318. To the north is an exit blocked by a heavy steel door. Okay, we're going to go east and turn to 37. You are in a chamber with blocked exits south, northeast, and northwest. There is an unmarked door, turn to 20, and exits west, turn to uh, 353, and east, turn to 116. Okay, we are going to go east and turn to 116. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 336. If you are unlucky, turn to 374. Okay, so our luck is currently 10, so we need this to be 10 or lower. And it was good, but we lose a luck point. So we're now down to 9. Um, we were lucky, so we're turning to 336. Uh, deduct two time units. Okay, it puts me down to nine time. You are, uh, you are in a chamber with exits east, turn to 12, west, turn to 37, and south, turn to 326. Okay, um, we're going to go east and turn to 12. Uh, deduct two time units. Okay, it puts me down to seven. You are in a chamber with exits north, turn to 336, or west, turn to 180. A southern exit is blocked. Okay, we're going to go west and turn to 180. Uh, you are enveloped in a, pre in a prehistoric forest full of strange creatures. Now the ground is a swamp with snake-like creatures slithering through it. All the exits are hidden from you. This is no mere illusion, but a full-scale Grom reproduction. You make no headway on your speed board, so you abandon it and start hacking through the undergrowth with the neutron sword. It is impossible to tell the best way to go. Will you choose heading A, 10 to 320, heading B, 10 to 220, or heading C, 10 to 359? Okay, we're going to choose heading B and turn to 220. Actually, we'll just see that picture because I didn't, I didn't show you that. There we go. Anyway, heading B and 220. You cut your way through the undergrowth. Once, when you happen to look up, you see a metal ladder going straight up. You climb this and find yourself in a tunnel going northwest. As you walk along, random and irregular parts of the floor open up and shut. 
From the flames and heat below, you realise that you'll have to watch your step. Throw one die. This is the section that has opened. Uh, throw a second die. This is where you are standing. If the first number is the same as the second, you are fallen into the fiery into the fiery furnace. Repeat this procedure three more times. If you survive, turn to 278. Yeah, so pretty much this means um, we have to do it four, yeah, four times. If if we ever roll a double, that means we're dead. So we have to roll uh, two dice four times, and we don't want to roll a double. So it's not the score that counts. I'm, I'm looking at the roll dice thing on the bottom left. No, it's one six. Oh dear, we're dead. No, we're not. Let's do it again. No, no, and no. Good. Okay, so we're dead. That's the first death. That's a pretty cheap death, I think, but oh well, we'll just carry on. Um, anyway, 278, so after getting through all that, we can die instantly just from rolling a double, which is actually quite likely. I mean, how many doubles are there? Um, six out of 36 possibilities. Anyway, we've run out of time. Sorry about the, uh, the rubbish I was just talking about. Anyway, so, yeah, we're on paragraph 278. Let's leave that as unread. So we're on 278, and then we will continue this in the next video. I should be able to complete the game in the next video. Yeah, we're nearly done. Almost done. That's it. So thanks very much for watching. In the next video, um, I will be completing the game. Thanks again and goodbye.